You're watching Ramping Up Your English on RVTV Voices. Our current unit is animals, and today's episode is about animals of Africa. Now, this segment is segment two of episode 56. I want to share a great book I have about Africa. Now, the first thing to know about Africa is that it's a big continent. It's the home of some of the world's most fascinating animals, but that's not all. Despite some deeply troubled areas, the people of Africa provide the greatest richness to the continent. This book features this colorful humanity in various regions. There's a lot of rich culture about which to learn. Here are some of the animals featured. The mandrel has that red nose and blue cheeks. It eats small animals, grass, and fruit, along with other things. Now here's a hippopotamus blowing water out of its nose. They spend the day in ponds, swamps, and rivers, mostly submerged in water. During the nighttime, they emerge onto land, often trotting or running. They move quickly to return to their water hole. Those who are in their path often get crushed. In fact, death by hippo is the most common casualty from African wildlife. I think this is my favorite picture in the book. You can appreciate the calmness and the sheer size of the western lowland gorillas, but also see the heavily armed soldier. Is he protecting the gorillas from poachers? The war in this area has been deadly for some of these gentle apes and for so many people who share this country with them. Africa, Natural Spirit of the African Continent is published by Paragon Books. I'll have the ISPN posted on my website, letscreate.org. The photography is fantastic, and the text explores the cultural riches of this richly blessed continent. I highly recommend you find it at your local library or look it up to see if you can own your own copy. Now, when you think of African animals, you probably think of lions as well as elephants, gorillas, and hippopotamus. Known as the king of beasts, the African lion is known for its ferociousness. Well, you're looking at the very definition of apex predator. Lions inhabit grasslands and arid areas of Africa south of the Sahara Desert. Now, they live in groups called prides, and each pride has one mature male. He's the alpha. He's the one who uh, gets to mate with the females. He does not hunt, but he gets the first morsel from the kill. Now, the male has important roles, even though they don't generally hunt. The male defends the territory, and he also defends the females. If anything would threaten one of the females, I've seen pictures of male lions. They, they're like standing guard, only they're lying down while the females are sleeping during the day after their hard night of hunting. Now, as I said, the females do the hunting, usually in groups. A female can hunt by herself, but she's not going to have the same success rate as when they cooperate and hunt together. The males are distinguished from the females by those bushy manes they have on their necks. Now, a lion's roar can be heard six miles away, so it appears that intruding males don't have much of an excuse. There's so much to learn about the King of Beasts. Let's see what you learn from this video. Meet the King of the Beasts, a well-known title for a lion. This male lion looks relaxed. And you'd be relaxed, too, if you were an apex predator and the females of your pride did all the hunting and you just had to show up to get first dibs on the food. Male lions are easy to identify with their great size and the thick mane protecting their necks. A group of lions is called a pride and there's only one dominant male in each pride. This male mates with all the females in the pride, the lionesses. The alpha male needs protection from other males who fight for being head of the pride. These female lions are at Wildlife Safari in Winston, Oregon. Their sleek shape and long tail enable them to outrun and bring down their prey. They often do this as a team.
This lioness is at the Oakland Zoo in California. Lions live in the wild in Africa, but most zoos and wildlife parks in America have lions. Lions are the top members of a class known as big cats. This lion scratches her ear just like my little cat. The zoo in Oakland has male lions, or at least this male lion. During the daytime, lions aren't very active, conserving their energy for the nighttime when they hunt. Lions are carnivores, attacking and killing their prey. They use the cover of darkness to get close. Then they use their powerful hind legs for a final sprint. Their long canine teeth finish the kill. Lions eat a variety of other animals, zebras, impalas, antelope. While they're not the fastest of animals, they're among the five fastest. They don't have to eat every day either. They can lie around digesting their last big meal. The alpha male gets choice of the food. So let's look at the adaptations of lions that help give them the enviable spot at the apex of predators. Their light brown color helps them get close to ambush their prey. Their cooperative hunting allows them to bring down animals much larger than themselves. Noise. Their streamlined bodies and powerful legs help them to burst into a sprint, outrunning many other animals. Their powerful jaws and long pointed canine teeth help them immobilize and kill their prey. Their whiskers are very sensitive, helping them avoid objects on dark nights and they can retract their claws for more speed when running. Lions live in a variety of habitats in Africa. They rule over the great grasslands like the Serengeti, but they're also found in dense jungle and in wetlands. That may be why they do okay in zoos and wildlife parks. Lions are such formidable predators that they're kept separate from other zoo animals, lest the other animals become their meal. This male at least has company in the Oakland Zoo. He's calling out to a lioness. For her part, she seems to welcome his playful attention. In a food web, some consumers need to be at the top, and lions fill that niche very well.